So we know how to design an nth order normalized Butterworth filter, but what happens if we want a cutoff frequency that isn't equal to one? How are we going to do that? Well, we can do that by scaling this normalized filter up. And that is easily done by simply doing this. In the frequency domain, we can scale our normalized filter from omega equals one up to whatever omega c we want simply by replacing omega with omega over omega c. Equivalently, we can scale our filter in the s domain by replacing s with s over omega c. So either of these options is uh, something we can do to scale up our normalized filter to our desired cutoff frequency. This might look a little weird right here. Hey, take this transfer function, which is a function of s, and replace s with s over omega c. It looks like we're kind of introducing an omega variable, but remember, omega c is just a number, okay? As a symbol, we write it as omega c, but omega c is just a number. It might be 10,000, or 87, or 500, something like that. So replacing s with s over a number, this is still a function of s, not a function of omega. So don't be confused with the notation. This is a variable, which is a number. And when you design the filter, omega c is some number. So by simply replacing omega with omega over omega c, or replacing s with s over omega c, we can easily change the cutoff frequency of our filter and get a cutoff frequency that we want. Something else that we often want to do, though, when designing a filter is to control the the gain. So sometimes we want to actually have a very specific gain. You know, this is the amount that the frequency is changed in amplitude at a given frequency. So we usually want to specify that. And typically we specify that using what we call a passband gain and a stopband gain. So this cartoon kind of depicts what those quantities are. Typically for a low pass filter, we have a gain of approximately one at low frequencies, then it starts falling off and omega p is what we call the passband frequency. And usually at that passband frequency, we specify exactly how much gain we should have. So sometimes gp is actually equal to one, but sometimes we might wanna set gp to be 0.9 or 0.8 or something if we want it to be something other than one. Similarly, how this filter rolls off we know that as the filter order changes, that this will become sharper and sharper, but sometimes we want to actually specify at the frequency omega s, which is what we call the stop band frequency, I want a gain of 0 0.002. So sometimes you want to very specifically say, I want it to be equal to g sub s at omega sub s. So typically when we design filters, we have these four parameters, omega p, omega s, and their corresponding gains, GP and GS. And this is how we specify the filter specifications. And from these filter specifications, we can then figure out the filter order that we need. In this plot here, I've plotted the amplitude response of our filter in the frequency domain as a linear quantity. It's kind of varying between zero and about one. Often though, when we specify these gains, we don't specify them as numbers, we specify them in dB scale. So let's review that briefly. When we specify a gain in dB, that means we need to take 20 log 10 of our amplitude response. So this is a voltage quantity. It's controlling the voltage coming through. So we use 20 log 10 to represent this kind of power gain number. So if we actually plug in our definition of the Butterworth filter we're working with here, we know that the amplitude response can be written as one plus one over the square root of one plus omega over omega c raised to the two n. Here I'm using the variable omega x to indicate that at this frequency omega x, I want a gain of gx. So on the previous chart, we talked about wp and ws. This is just a generalization of those concepts. At some frequency omega x, I want a gain of gx. So if that is true, this equation should hold. I need to have gx equal to 20 log 10 of this quantity. We can actually do a little bit of algebraic manipulation. 20 log 10 of a ratio of quantities is actually 0 minus 20 log 10 of the denominator only. So this is just a property of logarithms. The logarithm of the top minus the logarithm of the bottom. The logarithm of the top is 0. So 0 minus 20 log 10 of the denominator. And then this quantity is really a square root quantity, 
which you can think of as this raised to the one half. So using the property of logarithms, I can bring the one half out front, and that turns into minus 10 log 10 of 1 plus omega x over omega c raised to the 2n. So this equation right here, gx equals minus 10 log 10 of 1 plus omega x over omega c raised to the 2n is a very useful equation. We can use this for our filter design to specify a gain that we want at the frequency we, we want for some cutoff frequency and solve for n to figure out what filter order I need to meet that filter design specification. Let's go ahead and do that using the frequencies we just talked about, the passband frequency and the stop band peak frequency. So let's evaluate this equation specifically at omega p and omega s. If we do that, we end up with these types of equations. We end up with the gain at the uh, passband frequency omega p in dB, so this is in dB, is equal to this. See what I can do here? I can actually solve for the ratio omega p over omega c. If I divide this side of the equation by a negative 10, by 10, take a negative sign, subtract off the 1, I can actually isolate this quantity and I can write omega p over omega c raised to the 2n is equal to this. Here is the same type of work for the stop band frequency. The gain at my stop band frequency in dB is equal to minus 10 log 10 of 1 plus omega s over omega c raised to the 2n. If I divide both sides by negative 10, take the, raise each side to the power 10, shift the 1 over, I can isolate this quantity and write it as 10 to the minus gs dB over 10 minus 1. So I have these two equations, 1 and 2, that contain my passband frequency, my passband gain, my stop band frequency, and my stop band gain. If I divide those two equations by each other, equations 1 and 2, I can end up with this equation right here. When you divide equation 1 by equation 2, the omega c's cancel, and you end up with this equation. And now we're really close to something that's very useful. I now have a parameter here, a parameter here, a parameter here, and a parameter here. Those are things that I specify about my filter. Those are characteristics that I want. What I don't know is what should the filter order be. But now I'm almost there. I can just take this equation and raise each side of that equation to the 1 over 2n to isolate the n. So if I do that, I can actually get this equation right here. I manipulate this into this form and now I have this boxed in equation that tells me exactly which filter order I need to choose based on my stop band gain, my pass band gain, my pass band frequency, and my stop band frequency. So this is a very useful equation. You tell me your filter specs, I plug them into this equation, and then I can tell or figure out what filter order I need to make the filter that I need. So this is one very useful equation that we'll use in our design example here shortly. Actually, some other equations that are useful as well, though, too. If we go back to equation 1 and solve for omega c, we can actually write our cutoff frequency as a function of our passband frequency and our passband gain. So you can kind of tell just by looking at this equation how these different parameters are coupled. If you specify omega p and order and gain that uniquely determines omega c. Or if you want to specify the gain and the passband frequency and the stop band frequency and the gain that uniquely determines n. So these are all very coupled parameters and setting some of them determines the other ones and vice versa. So sometimes instead of solving for filter order like on the previous chart we like this equation it lets us solve for the cutoff frequency. If we do the same work for equation 2, if we rearrange for omega c, we also get this equation. So you can see just by looking at these two equations, both of these should equal omega c, but they contain different variables. So equations 3 and 4 here are other design equations that we'll use in just a minute when we do our design example. These two equations combined with the filter order equation from the previous chart are basically what you need to do the filter design.